save my butt photographing. doing an equine photography tips slash ideas type video and warning big flashing warning on the screen whatever I'm not a pro I'm not a professional photographer so if you want some professional tips go somewhere else <laughs> but these are some things that I've learned over the past few months while I have been doing photography and I would like to share them with you because I remember when starting out I was like what am I doing <laughs> like this these suck so I would like to say I have gotten better so here we go I just want to add in case you didn't know that I actually do do photography and I have a photography account on Instagram I'll link it down below if you want to check it out First things first, I use a Canon camera. I have the Canon camera T6, great camera. So these tips are mainly for Canon cameras, but if you have a Nikon, 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 um, some people pronounce it Nikon, but that's probably because they're British. Um, anyway, so I have the Canon camera. So these tips will mainly go for Canon cameras, but if you can use it with your Nikon, that's great. Some of them you can't, some of them I'm sure you can, but this is what I've learned with my Canon camera. So tip number one. With equine photography, you're gonna want to be on the fastest shutter speed that you can possibly have. For my Canon camera, that is the sports mode. Here, and I'll give you some close-ups later, or like, right after this clip, whatever, voiceover. Um, for this camera, you have a dial on the side and you can choose what mode. So for sports mode, it's the little running person right there. To know that you're on it, there's just this little white dash here. Most cameras are automatically set to A, which is good, but it's not the highest shutter speed. So I would suggest going to sports mode. So it is right now, mine is on sports mode. So I can take pictures very fast, shutter speed, which is great when you're doing any kind of photography with equines, equines, whatever. Um, but this will be especially great for jumping so you can get as many timed good photos as possible. But I will also talk about that later in the video. Tip number two, whenever you're on sports mode, for taking equine photography when the people are riding. I'm gonna do some like photography, like actual photo shoots later and tips for that. But this is just like in the show ring or just riding or something like that. Just tips for that first. So tip number two is look through the lens here. For my Canon camera, if I turn it on right now, you can see this screen here, and I'll show you close-ups later. This screen is on, which means if I were to focus, I would not have to look through the lens, and I could just focus and take a picture. And I took two right there, because that's the shutter speed. So there are my beautiful pictures, and that's what I see when I'm filming. <laughs> anyway, so that that's nice, and I would suggest using this for whatever you want um but my tip is to have it so that it looks like this and then you look through this lens here so i would be looking like this see how quick that beep the beep sounds means that it focused so you have this versus that took a lot lot longer if you're doing a hunter round, a jumper round, any round, I don't care, um, my tip is to look through the lens instead of on the screen. It focuses a lot quicker and you'll need that when you're taking photography with the equines. So, tip number three, and I think a lot of you will already have this if you're 
beginner photographers just like me, I always, always suggest being on autofocus. There's this little button right here that'll tell you when you are on autofocus versus manual focus. To tell when you're on autofocus or manual focus, there's just this little dash right here. Right now I'm on autofocus, which is what you want to be on. You can switch it back and forth between autofocus and manual focus if you want to. You could use manual focus for stuff like photography, just like a photo shoot or something like that, but manual focus or autofocus is just great for jumper classes, hunter classes, whatever. When you're actually riding and stuff like that, that's what they're great for because that is what will focus and I will go that little beep versus when I'm on manual focus, you have to turn this to tell when it's focused. Now that is when I suggest actually going to this screen because you won't be able to tell when it's focused otherwise and then I have to focus it and boom. But when you're watching people ride or taking photos when people are riding, that's not the greatest method because sometimes you won't be able to focus in time because it's all about timing. So now tip number four, which this has helped me probably the most out which I don't really know why it's tip number four, but whatever, I'm just going in order of how I think of them. Anyway, tip number four is to focus on your subject before they come to the jump. Now, I mostly photograph um, hunters or like just jumping. Like when people are jumping, that's when I love to take photos. Doing flat work photos is fun, but I like jumping ones. And the one tip that I found that helped me the most and that I had to figure out on my own was focus on the horse, focus on the subject before they get to the jump. Now, when I'm on sports mode and I have, I'm looking through my little lens, if I am focusing and focusing, you'll hear that beeping, which means it's continuing to focus. And you can hear the little lens moving. So. That means it's continuing to focus and when you're when your horse is coming up on a jump if you focus just on the jump it's going to keep the jump in focus and not the horse you want to focus on the horse a few strides out depending on where you are it might not work because it might be focused on the jump so you really have to be careful about that but focus on the horse a couple strides out so when they come in and over the jump you can take your picture and boom you got the perfect focused on the right subject picture. Tip number five. This one was actually probably the most helpful one. And you kind of have to know this to take photos of moving horses or else you're gonna get those speed blur lines, which you might get sometimes if the horse is going really fast and you're at like a derby or something like that, like a, the Kentucky Derby, I don't know, like a horse race or something like that. So my fifth tip, is to go you have to go to manual exposure on your little dial so and then here this is the screen and i'll put some close-ups whatever later so to get to manual exposure let's say you're on sports mode you want to use this little dial you actually go all the way back to the beginning to the end you can go to manual exposure and then once it loads you can click literally the side button and then go to AI Servo. You're gonna to wanna to press the side button. I'm currently, and I'm always on this, AI Servo. If you get your Canon camera right now, look at it, you probably, if you're having struggles taking shots of moving horses, you're probably not on AI Servo. You're probably on one shot, which is great for like standing objects, but as soon as they start moving, you're gonna get those blur lines and you don't want that. So go to AI Servo. This is great for moving shots and this doesn't have to be with your equines. You can do this with like dogs, cats, birds. Heck, I have a bird and I use this. But the one thing that you have to be careful with is keeping it on AI Servo. AI Servo drains the battery and depending on if you're like having a long day at a show and you want as much battery as possible, make sure to switch it on to one shot afterwards. Like if you're just, if you're going a whole day 
keep it on a servo but if you're not using it for a while and your camera is just sitting there switch it back to one shot so it doesn't drain the battery as easily tip number six so this one can also go for actual writing or this can go for a photo shoot it's all about the lighting I'll go to the barn and if we're riding in the indoor ring and I get pictures, they're not that good because the lighting's not good. You want a day, my preferred day to take pictures is overcast. It sounds that the greatest, but truly it is the best day to take pictures as long as it's not super cloudy. So overcast is when there's sun, but it's not so much so that it's making shadows on your faces. I'm talking about it like I have any clue about what it is. I don't, like I said, I'm not a professional. But overcast is the best time, or like best weather to take pictures that I've found because this sunlight, it gives you natural lighting, which is great, especially if you're just riding and you need natural lighting, but it doesn't cast harsh shadows on your face and make harsh lines and like bright sunbeams. Here's an example of a photo I took of a friend featuring Audrey when I went out and took some pictures. That day it was quite sunny, so you can see some harsh shadows and very bright sunbeams. So I don't prefer that. So that is my preferred time to take photos. Well, that's my preferred weather. My preferred time, which I guess this could be tip number seven, is to take later in the afternoon. You do not want to take pictures directly at noon because the sun's shining like right down on you and you're not gonna have any lighting. Unless it's like overcast, you might be able to get off with that, but you want the sun so that it's facing a little bit of a direction so you can get a direct shine on a horse. And if you do that, you wanna stand at the, at the side. So let's say the sun is over here. You wanna stand where the sun is. So when the sun is shining on, shining on the horses, you can take pictures of the horses from that side. You don't want to go on the other side because it's going to be dark and bad. So. so here are two example pictures. This one is when I am where the sun is shining on me and not Stallone. So he gets kind of a dull coloration versus this one, which it is where the sun is shining on that side of Stallone. He gets bright bold colors also featuring more pictures of Audrey that's just the tip that I have it's all about the lighting so I guess this is my last tip tip number eight so tip number eight this kind of goes speaking for any photographers anything like that when it's not a photo shoot when you're just taking pictures of people riding use your higher zoom lens this saves you so much. This one is only an 18 to 55 millimeter. So I can, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, but it's not that high of a zoom. Now this one is a 75 to 300 millimeter. This is great. And I love this lens when I'm taking pictures of people riding because this truly is the best. You can zoom in quite a lot, whatever, stuff like that it can get quite big and quite heavy but this is the best lens for taking pictures because if you're on one side of the ring, you want to be able to zoom in to maybe the middle of the ring or like e e even the other side, maybe something like that. So use your higher zoom lens. I mean, that's probably a speak for itself, but yeah, I would even use your higher zoom lens for photo shoots and that's just me, but sometimes these take even better pictures that's what I've found than this lens because it's a it's a better lens and it takes better pictures. So you can even use this for photography, but be careful because it zooms in a lot. So you have to be kind of far away or something like that if you wanna take some pictures. I wouldn't suggest this for like headshots, stuff like that, but yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little equine photography tips. If any of these help you, I'm really glad. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye.